Earlier this week, we showed you some of our exclusive interview with former University of Colorado professor Ward Churchill, a man who spent decades lecturing young minds about what is wrong with America. Churchill eventually lost his job after his essay comparing the 9-11 victims to an infamous Nazi finally hit the national media. He was unapologetic for his hurtful statements, and he still believes those victims arguably deserved it and that America is an evil empire. Tonight, we bring you perhaps the best part of this entire interview. When Dinesh D'Souza, the creator of the documentary film America, joined us on set, we discussed the professor's worldview and how his opinions are shared at prestigious universities across this country. Watch. This is the worldview, not just of Professor Churchill, that America is evil and needs to be stopped, but of many uh, who are not on the left necessarily, but on the far left. Yeah, I think, you know, to me, this is uh, very fascinating. At one point, when I, when I saw Ward Churchill in his home in Atlanta, he had uh, said to me, Dinesh, um, you became a conservative because you came to America in the 80s, in the Reagan era. Uh, and he described his involvement in the Vietnam War and how, to some degree, that had turned him against not just the military, but against America. Um, and it occurred to me, universities across this country. Watch. This is the worldview, not just of Professor Churchill, that America is evil and needs to be stopped, but of many uh, who are not on the left necessarily, but on the far left. Yeah, I think, you know, to me, this is uh, very fascinating. At one point, when I, when I saw Ward Churchill in his home in Atlanta, he had uh, said to me, Dinesh, um, you became a conservative because you came to America in the 80s, in the Reagan era. Uh, and he described his involvement in the Vietnam War and how, to some degree, that had turned him against not just the military, but against America. Um, and it occurred to me, you know, we can think whatever we want about Vietnam, but what I think is remarkable is how a whole generation on the left went through that war. And it wasn't just that they turned against the war, but they made the war a metaphor for the country from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So they went right back to Christopher Columbus and they rewrote American history in, into becoming a series of Vietnams, of war crimes, one after the other. And they haven't, <laughs> they haven't stopped. So if the country is bad, it deserves what it gets. And in a sense, the whole thrust of his argument depends on, are we in fact Nazi Germany? yes or no. Yeah. Now, when I see the World Trade Center, I see something totally different than he does. In fact, what I see is America representing a technological capitalism that is making the whole world better. I mean, if Nike or if Apple opens up a jobs wanted sign in Bombay, the lines will be around the block. Why? Because people are seeing hundreds of millions of people are coming out of poverty in Singapore and Thailand in China in India. Now, a lot of people People still remain poor, I know that. But this technological capitalism here in America is not the problem, it's in fact the solution to the problem. So to treat the World Trade Center as a symbol of evil, it's actually a symbol of good in the world. My point, my major point was for all the buzz terms that sound nice when you put them on, what I think you see is a, a form of corporatism here. And corporatism is not necessarily capitalist. Corporatism could be fascist. For example, Mussolini was a corporatist. Is, is, okay, it could be state corporatism as in the Soviet Union. That's Professor independent Churchill, of the ideology is, you frame it in, and certainly we don't have a free market. Is there anything good about America? Is there anything good about America? Yeah, I love to drive back and forth across the place, and I love, there are people. Have we done anything good in our history? Have you done anything good in your history? I don't know who the we is here. You're talking about the, the government? The, the United States about? of America. Have we done any good? Boy, because you have a long list of the terrible things we've done. Can you think of anything good we did? Not off the top, but I'm sure you'll fill in the blanks. That, that's the problem with Professor Churchill, because people do not look at him as an honest broker. When you cannot, you, you cannot offer one thing, maybe liberating Europe? Um, 
maybe that was the ending, Soviet Union. Maybe I ending believe. World War Two. I mean, nothing. Maybe fighting a war to end slavery. I think I, there were 27 Dinesh, million you, Soviets who died during that war that had a little more to liberating Europe, if that's what you that's want to right. talk about. You're, than making, you're making my point, sir. Right, but the Soviet Union was directly invaded, so they were merely protecting themselves and fighting the Nazis. They were perfectly happy to be allied with the Nazis before that. You remember? I do. And remember. as for the United States, the United States not only liberated Europe but rebuilt Europe. Europe. And so former enemies, Germany and Japan, which were against us, are now friends. And I'm that's, familiar with uh, the history. Every year, tens of, tens of millions of people try to come to the United States. Yeah. They try to come. And if we lifted the curtains, more would come. Half yeah. the world would come here. I'm now, sure. they're coming here, voting with their feet, leaving everything that matters to them behind. They're coming here because they think that this place provides them with a better life. Are, are they wrong? Are they, are they coming to an evil empire? What do, they, what do you know that they don't? They're following their wealth. They're coming destination. here for economic opportunity, but aren't they all they're coming? That's because the economic opportunity in no small part accrues from their own countries. It's the expropriation of their wealth which puts them into destitution there. Let me ask you this. Why did you become a teacher? To Professor. teach. To profess. To offer this worldview? Yes. Were you doing that for years at the University of Colorado? Yes. When you wrote your essay on 9-11, which you then turned into a book a couple of years later, 2003, did people read it? Not only that, I got a runner-up for a Best Writing Human Rights Award for it. From whom? From the adult, um, Gustavus Myers Center. So was it known? It's fairly that? prestigious in these, this, this sphere. So it was known that you, had, that you had these views, that you had written this essay and, and followed it up with a book? Yes, not everyone's ignorant. And this wasn't a problem for your colleagues at the university or elsewhere, as far as you know? As far as I know, I was um, probably in the top 10 percentile in terms of teaching effectiveness, as rated by the students at the University of Colorado, or at least the College of Arts and Sciences, which is the big one. Mm -hmm. I'd won the Thomas Jefferson Award. I'd won the President's University Service after, Award. After this essay? Oh, no. Oh, no. That's what I'm asking. After the essay and, and once people had read it, prior to it becoming a national story, was, was it accepted? Were, were people faculty. objecting okay. to it? Was, it? was there anything within the academic community that suggested to you people had read it and did not have a problem with it? Now, you, ha you have got to hear his answer to that question and the follow-up. It's unbelievable. So did Ward Churchill's colleagues in academia really not know about his radical views as printed in newspapers and books? Or did they know and accept and applaud them? Was there anything within the academic community that suggested to you people had read it and did not have a problem with it? Uh, yeah. Post-tenure reviews, peer reviews, all manner of things that would suggest precisely that. Okay. So how, how? So it's situational, okay? It becomes fashionable to take a particular position, and then you invent the no, evidence I understand. to make it I, seem and, plausible. And I think we've laid out for the viewers that you know it didn't become a thing until you got asked to speak at Hamilton College, and it hit the national media, and then it became a thing. But for four years, it was not an issue, Dinesh. And, and as far as we can tell, that is not because the academic community had no idea about how Ward Churchill thinks or what he was teaching his students. There are two remarkable things here. One is, and I think Ward, we are finally in the point of, of agreement, is that a lot of the radicals who started out wanting to bomb things and blow up things decided that there's a more effective way to promote radicalism, and that is to become teachers. Uh, you saw this with Bill Ayers. We see this with Ward Churchill. Bernadine Dorn, who was on Bernadine the FBI's Dorn. 10 Most Wanted list, who then went on to teach at North Northwestern Law School. And these are people who can have receptions for a young Obama. They're people who can go to the fac faculty cocktail party. They can be at the Democratic Convention and they fit in. Nobody, nobody thinks it's odd to have them there. Now, Ward's right. Once it all blows up, suddenly he becomes inconvenient. He's persona non grata. But he's right to feel a little bit outraged because before that, they those, same, him. those same people were like, hey, Ward, you know, we kind of agree with you. We, wouldn't, may, we may not blow up the Pentagon, but your premise that America is the bad guy, your premise that America is the evil empire, not only do we kind of agree with it, we teach that stuff ourselves. Mm -hmm. I would also point out to you, it's not just former radicals from the left. You got an individual who is eligible for prosecution as war crimes, a full professor of law at University of California. And I wouldn't want to mention John Yu's name, but 
we're talking about that. He's the one who wrote the memo justifying the use of. Uh, well, he wasn't alone. The other one. Uh, techniques. Jay Bybee is a federal judge at this point, and then you've got a couple that are uh, ones that are you, law school. Are you contending that that uh, American academia does not lean left? You're not contending that, are you? In my experience, it would lean right, rather further to the right. Really? Uh, really. How do you describe yourself politically? The way I've always described myself is as an indigenous, okay, which is that I take the circumstances, situation of indigenous peoples as first priority. And probably the closest approximation that you come up with in the general understanding of these neat little political labels to get affixed on people. It would probably be anarchist. Dinesh, you know, in closing, we've, we've had a couple of these interviews now. You know, we sat with, with Bill Ayers and we sat with, with Ward Churchill. And my question to you is whether you agree with the professor that these are unusual examples within academia or whether they are the norm in these academic circles and speak accurately about what the, the students who are going to these colleges are hearing from their professors, not just about the world, but about the country in which we live. See, I think we're seeing, we've seen a real shift in American politics, and most people are not even aware of it. I mean, if you go back, for example, to the Truman administration or FDR, the general agreement was it didn't matter if you're a Republican or Democrat. America's a good country. America's a force for good in the world. The free market system creates wealth, even if you then choose to redistribute it. So there was a pro-American consensus. And what we see now, and we see repeatedly, is that consensus is broken down. And a left has emerged out of the 60s and out of the Vietnam war that sees America in bitter, hostile terms. They see America as the enemy. They actually believe we're the evil empire. And so it is conceivable that they look at their job, their moral job, is one of restraining, curtailing, and undermining America. And they're doing that in America. Now, these, this left has become extremely powerful in the media in academia, in Hollywood, and it's now moving into the elementary and secondary schools. And the conservatives are all focused on the election. Who's going to take the Senate? Who's going to win in 2016? Not realizing that the culture, the high ground of the culture, is being occupied very powerfully by the left. And it's a left in which Ward Churchill is not the mainstream, but he's a perfectly respectable part of it, and has been for 30 years. That's why guys like Ward and Bill Ayers are surprised when they become controversial figures because they've been inhabiting an academic environment very comfortably and it's not until the, the sort of the bee gets out of the bottle and people go whoa then they go whoa we can't believe that people are shocked because we've been saying all this for a long time and nobody raised an objection. Mm. Tanesh thank you very much. Professor Churchill thank you too.